Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Game of Disco podcast. And our first ever one recorded live together. Yeah, we're actually in person. So it's myself, James, and Harry, as always, my amazing co-host. And we are on uh, location at WASD. We are at WASD, which is the new name for Rezd. Uh, so same team as Rezd, uh, a bit of a complicated story. They've uh, parted company with the, with the old Parted company. ways. <laughs> parted ways with the old company. Anyway, the important thing is the new. The sa- it's the same team. Um, and we've got some really cool indie developers, and it's it's really good fun. And it's in the same place. It's back at uh, still at Tobacco Dock, and in we're East at London. a live gaming and event. Actually, a live in gaming person, event. doing stuff, playing yeah. games. <laughs> Life has returned to normal, yeah. almost. And hardly see any masks. It's uh, uh, free masks, yeah. but that's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. People are nervous still. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we are currently sat in the chill out area, tabletop area, at the event. It's quite a large room, quite airy. Um, it's, loved, it's very nice, isn't it? And uh, it's been good. I've, I've really, do you know what? I've really enjoyed this actually more than I thought I was. Same here, actually. And I'm not just talking about the three coronas I had before we started recording this. <laughs> you know, Dutch courage. Dutch or <laughs> corona, Spanish it's, courage. It's, it's, it's oiling, oiling the wheels. Let's I go think, with that. Yeah, actually. lubrication. But um, lubrication. Yeah, and we're back. And you yeah. know what else? I didn't tell you this earlier, but it's yeah. actually the year anniversary of our first podcast episode. No way. So we started on the fourth of um, <sighs> April. Last year, I didn't get you anything. I'm really sorry. That's okay. Uh, okay. You can get me something. Get another beer. After this. <laughs> but yeah, so this will be a special two-part episode on the WASD event and a retrospective of all things gaming and maybe a bit of Easter chat because it is Easter where it will be soon. Two in week, between two weeks, the two episodes yeah. that are coming out yeah. over our anniversary episode special, let's call it, because we're being fancy and shit. Um, so uh, initially, I'm just going to give you some of my thoughts on the show so far. Like I've played a couple of games. One game wasn't such a big fan of, uh, which is called Honey, I Joined a Cult by Team Seventeen. I just, I did, what do you think, Harry? No, I mean, it was a fun name. It's yeah, like, it was a, can, such a fun can, name. Can yeah. the concept deliver? Because you seemed yeah. very excited. Was I like, was really, no. I was hooked on the concept. I thought was brilliant. It's like essentially the concept here is really simple. You play a cult leader. I mean, yeah. who who has never wanted to have their own cult, right? Just for fun. But it's quite a fun idea, have your own cult. But it's quite, um, it's very... Slow? Yeah, it's a little bit slow. I mean, I did have the tutorial on and I did play it after my beers, so maybe that was slow me down <laughs> a little bit. Um, but it, it was uh, a bit, quite bitty. It was a turn-by-turn sort of strategy kind of style game. Yeah. And it, I would have just liked a bit of a faster pace, I think. Maybe, to be fair, I only played it for maybe 10 minutes. So maybe once you're into it, it, it changes. But I, it didn't. It just didn't grab me. And there's quite a slow scene at the beginning. It's like a long, laborious cut scene. A long tutorial, which long isn't, tutorial. isn't great for a, like, yeah. a gaming demo at a show. Like You want to yeah. get into the action, have fun. Yeah. And I just was looking for something a little bit more, a bit bit faster paced, I think. That's than, this, than this kind of clicking, building, yeah. building your sort of... Yeah, that's what I prefer. It just wasn't what I thought, but anyway. I mean, the one I played was quite yeah. fun. So yeah, I also did right. Team 17. I did one yeah. called Unliving, oh, which is nice. like a pixel sort of um, demon kind of game, hack and slash kind of thing, pick different abilities and just have fun. And that was like much better, I thought. Well, yeah. Much more better suited to a, you know, gaming demo mm. expo experience. Um, that was a laugh. So yeah, I'd recommend that. Okay. But we both played a game we loved. Absolutely. This is one of my... I mean, to be fair, I haven't played many new games. You loved it so much that you spent there, like, I was there for a good <laughs> half hour. I was like, I mate, was, I the was, rest of the show to see. Yeah, I think I feel like it was there for a good hour at least. Yeah. Um, it's called uh, Muck Pixel 3. Yeah. Um, and the I got the developer's card. He's, he's literally... It's him, I think. It's a one-man band. Very, very yeah. small outfit. Um, and he's called... Soz Sawoski, he's Polish. Um, and I give you a little shout out twitter.com slash Sosowski. So S O S O W S K. It'll be in the show notes, don't worry. It'll be in the show notes. Don't try anyway, to spell that. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> so that's the important yeah. thing. And it was really good. So the graph graphically, quite basic. Well, it's a pixel, but, isn't it? But it's, a pixel it's, game. it's a pixel game. So but the, yeah, the concept, the, the made concept up for it. was the, it didn't matter because to be honest, it drew me in. So if you like Broken Sword, if you like um, any of the uh, Revolution Revolution games, so Monkey Island, etc., Dead the Tentacle, you I think this is a game you really enjoy. Um, so you play your character and you go through 
different, I don't know how to describe it. You it, you get put into different levels, all completely different. You could be um, in a race games. track. They're all, mini, they're all mini games. <laughs> you could be, there's a, a racing a car, and then there was like you skiing down the slope, and then yeah. you're on a plane. And it's simple, quite simple puzzles. Yeah. They weren't too hard. Um, you have to think too, and it, it's very quick. I would say I mean, it's almost you like, say that we both struggled with quite a few of them. Yeah, but, but uh, thank God he was there to help us. But it was, <laughs> but it was like like the crack is essentially like crack cocaine of crack yeah. cocaine of gaming. It's games <laughs> on crack. I mean, it was so like quick, it. so buzzy, perfect game for this show. It was I a really lot. loved it. What games it was really be, good fun. Really? I was I was hooked in. I thought I'll play this for like five minutes, yeah. and then I'm still there like an hour later. I yeah. mean, it's brilliant, really, really good. Yeah, can't can't really rave about it too much. I no. mean, can't speak too highly of it. I mean, other than that, though, you and mm. I, we didn't see much to took our eye, really. So what happened is that after we were playing that for quite a long time, uh, we wanted to get a drink, and then we ended up <laughs> in the bar, um, and then we had a chat with Swanee, Good who's here, because uh, Sega have a stand here. Yeah. What happened it, it, is, yeah, yeah, so after we were playing, we were playing for like an hour, and then yeah. we discovered the bar, didn't we, Harry? So We, we did. We, we discovered the bar, and there were a few beers. We were only here for a few hours, so you need yeah. to make the most of it. So play some games, drink some beers. Yeah. A live some, gaming event, doing people. stuff in person, face yeah. to face. I've missed this. I really missed this. But yeah, it's been really good. Um, and that's it. And now, and then we're straight on to recording this podcast. We had an interview, which we you will hear later. Yeah, we part did. Two, so we had a quick chat about that. And then, yeah, well, I hope you have a few because it's a two part episode. This it one. is, and, and we've um, got a, we've got a few different people, interesting people that we met. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, a few different. Got some good interviews lined up for you guys. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's quite, it's nice actually because we've come on the first day. So it's Thursday, runs, this event runs from Thursday to Saturday. Yeah, a bit quieter. And, and it's a bit quieter. So it's perfect to record this. But at the same so, time, nice to see people out playing games in person at an event that's happening. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it hasn't happened in so long. It's been you, years. You can't get over this, Harry. I love like how it's. It's, it's, it's like over two years. <laughs> over two years. We started yeah. this podcast a year ago yeah. to make content to make the pod sorry make the pandemic yeah. seem a bit less dull yeah hopefully we've done that but uh i'm just excited to be out doing something excellent and yeah. you have some gaming news for us i, I do yeah. as is tradition as yeah. is you know as i normally do so yes let's dive into that so a few things i won't go too deep because you know we're trying to get onto the show and talk about that but uh, yeah so there is a brand new monkey island game coming out by ron gilbert very he's, excited by he's that. coming back um return to monkey island it's called same protagonist, Guy Brush Threepwood. Um, he's back and once again being voiced by Dominic Armato. That's exciting. It's point and click, it's basic, but my god, it's the same thing, and I love that. Because the first game was just amazing. Best game ever. Also, Sonic 2, the movie, is out. Mm-hmm. I've seen it and I cannot recommend it enough. I will not mention any spoilers because that'd be a dick move, but it was just so good. It's like the guys that are making it, they were like, you know what? This first game, sorry, this first film, mm-hmm. I think they did a big chance. And they took everything that worked well about the first film and they doubled down. And my God, did they nail it. They got it so right. The film is just packed for the references to the games. And like, it's not just for kids. It's a bit kiddy at times, but it's a kid's one. But at the same time, it's got a lot of adult stuff in it. And it's just such a joy. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Sonic 2, go and see it because it's, it is just a blast. Cool. Got to go there fast. You go. He even says that in the film, <laughs> which is hilarious. And can we just confirm you did pay for your ticket, Harry? I did. And yeah, of course absolutely. I did. Absolutely, fully, fully paid. I paid my date ticket as well. Ooh, didn't say that. Didn't say you had a date. <laughs> no, exactly. That took you by surprise. <laughs> uh, what else this month? Okay, yeah. um, the Halo TV series has now launched in the US. Oh, nice. I've not, I've not seen yeah. that. Okay. Um, it's on Paramount Plus, which we can't get in the UK first, uh, in, the, in the UK yet, rather. Um, but the first episode is available yeah. on YouTube. Um, okay. So if you've got a VPN, R matey, just say you're in the US and you could probably access that. Um, and yeah, I have no idea. Do you know who's place. who's that? Who's behind that? Or? I'm not sure at all. Yeah. It's Paramount Plus. Um, yeah. It's had a very mixed reception though. Yeah. Um, okay. Critics seem to like it, but fans hate it. They trashed it. They panned it. Oh really? Um, for all sorts of reasons. I'm not a Halo fan, so I have no idea why. Does he take his helmet off? I think that's it. Oh. Is it? No, it's a joke because of the Judge Dredd thing. I do remember that. Oh. So uh, in Judge Dredd, um, when they brought the Judge Dredd film, it was, God, this is quite a while ago, and going back, Stallone was playing Judge Dredd. So it's the, right. an early, the first Judge Dredd film. And he takes his helmet off, and fans were not happy because famously in the 
um, in the graphic in 2000 AD, in the graphic yeah. novel, the comic, he doesn't take off his helmet. So that was a big, big, big problem. I mean, I don't fans, know Halo, but, but, but in I've Halo, heard I heard that yeah. he does do this in the first episode, and yeah. fans are pissed off. I don't off. think I'm not as familiar with the Halo universe. I have played it a bit. I didn't have an, an Xbox. I played with my mates. I don't remember him taking his helmet off. But that could be. A, I mean, he's no Mandalorian, yeah. so he's no. Because <laughs> he can't take his helmet off, can he? Right. <laughs> I don't know. It's all. Um, interesting. Um, well, I'll have to check it out. See, see what all the fuss is about. Next episode, so, maybe we'll give our impression of it, but yeah. um, we'll see. Um, one last thing just came out the other mm-hmm. day. Max Payne One and Two Remaster has been announced. Ooh, that's fun. Nice. Cause that, that's a fun series. Again, it's not trying to be anything that it's not. It's mm-hmm. just it's just a laugh. And um, remasters, as long as it's not a GTA and a train wreck, <laughs> that's yeah, exciting. Did you get? Did you download the remastered one? No, what? Play the originals. Uh, they, they work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I heard. I, re- I was really just, I didn't download it, but I I would have been tempted to if it wasn't the, the reviews were so bad. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll stick with GTA Vice City. Fair play. Yeah. Um, anyway, one last thing: yeah. new releases. Um, if anyone cares, um, Kirby and the Forgotten Land came out. Nice. Kirby game. That's a laugh. If you like Kirby, um, Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga. If you're a Lego Star Wars fan, mm-hmm. it's like a compilation of the previous ones. So that's good if you haven't played them, I guess. Um, WWE 2022. Okay. Sorry, it's written down as 2K22. I'm guessing that's 2022, right? That's I don't. I don't do wrestling. I, I don't, yeah, neither do I. Not an yes. acting fan. <laughs> I like acting, just um, not that you know, melodramatic. It's a soap <laughs> opera, really, isn't it? That's it very much it is. is. Yeah. It literally is. Yeah. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, new game in that series. Okay. I feel like that has been done to death now. The first one was great, innovative, new, exciting. And then it's like, okay, let's just make more of them. And it's like, oh, you didn't need to. So, um, yeah, and also um, Elden Ring came out in the times of the last episode. Um, oh, nice. I've heard good things about that. Okay. The one by George R. R. Martin. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, you know, like a kind of, yeah. Uh, like a thing? I don't know. How would I describe Elden Ring? RPG with fantasy elements, and it's all quite good writing, quite exciting. Not sure not to say, right? cool. So he's moved on from Game of Thrones then. Has he? He's not finished the book. Oh, is he not? Oh, okay. Uh, it's not like he's got like two books left to write. Oh, has he still got he's, two books? He's put them off for like years and years and years. Uh... And fans are like, can, can you finish, please? Because you're not in the best of health. And the TV series, the TV series was such a bad ending. Oh, I thought and... it ended with the TV. Uh, okay. Well, they're separate things, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway. anyway. Yeah, so that's it for gaming news and new releases. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what else should we talk about? I mean, so we got yeah. a good interview coming up later on in this episode. We yeah, we've um, literally just recorded about 10 minutes ago. But, shall we yeah. go to that? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go to that. Okay. All right. So here we are at WASD, um, and I'm joined uh, by Assad Makari. Makari, sorry. Yeah, that's good. Uh, um, who is. Game Dog. Uh, so um, yeah. I, I'm a games de- uh, developer at a company called Aragon Pixel. Uh, we've worked on um, a couple of titles in the past. We're currently working on a new one. Um, I'm also a lecturer at the University of West London. And uh, yeah, I've just been uh, here at WASD enjoying all the different games and me bumping to, into some new faces and old faces. It's, it's been really good. Cool. Excellent. Um, and what are you, tell us about what you're working on at the moment. So What's... I'm working on a uh, strategy game at the moment, a real-time okay. strategy game. Uh, it's called Territorial. Yeah. Um, it's uh, yeah. It's, it's sort of like a it's very standard, like kind of like Starcraft desk strategy game. However, there's a, a mechanic in it where you're um, stealing um, other planets from other players and stuff. And uh, well, we've been working on that mm, possibly cool. for a year or two now, but we haven't gone into production. Um, so that's been really rewarding because I'm a massive strategy fan to work on something like that. Because uh, my previous titles were point and click adventures, and um, that was more like a retro homage, and this is more like. A, Experimenting with new technologies and stuff, so it's been really rewarding. Okay, excellent. And what's it? What it's going to be out on? What, so what um, platforms. So we're so, we're, we're developing. We're yeah. currently um, aiming for PC, but we're actually doing a console focus. Okay. And uh, with strategy games, it's a, the, sort of the eternal question: How do you get a strategy game to work functionally well with a controller? Okay. Uh, so we've been dealing with a lot of that kind of um, sort of UX issues um, okay. through development. Uh, we're, we're hopefully got a good handle on it, and uh, it's been. Okay. Pretty good. And the point and click stuff. I'm I'm a big point and click adventure fan. So 
at the moment I'm playing a lot of Fallout, but also I love, I love Broken Sword. I think it's probably yeah. one of my fav, absolute favourite games. That and a bit of Monkey Island. I'm, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, yeah, no, sorry. but um, you know they just announced there'll be a new Monkey Island game coming out no, by the original creator of the game. Really? Yeah, Ooh. it's called Return to Monkey Island. Okay. Sorry, let me jump into my news here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's by the original guy um, called um, Ron Gilbert. Yeah. Um, guy Brush Three Wood is back. No way. Sorry, guy Brush Three Wood. Yeah. And yeah, once again being voiced by Dominic Armato. Oh, wow. Return wow. to Monkey Island coming out later this year. On what platforms? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Probably but PC. Just been announced. You know, PC, but how yeah. exciting is that? Very what exciting. What a game! Yeah. I'm really, I'm, a, I'm a little annoyed because it used to be on the App Store, mm. and I never downloaded it, and then, and now it's been removed from the App Store. And I don't have a PC. I've got a Mac, and you can't. I can't play it on my Mac. Yeah. And it's like I really, really want to play this, and I can't. I have to get Steam, but then I can't get the. I mean, Steam serves you right. Work. Buy a PC. Yeah. All right. Oh well, you could try wine. <laughs> that could be an option. Get what? Uh, wine. It's like a sort oh. of like a virtual desktop, but kind of like uh, not virtual. It's okay. it's hard to explain, but uh, you can run some Windows applications on Macs, but it's a bit janky. Okay. Might not work, but you know, okay. might, might might be worth, worth a look show. at. Worth a show. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, Broken Sword, I think, is probably one of my favourite game series of all time. Every game that comes, as soon as it comes out, I don't even need to see reviews. I'll yeah. just, I'll pre-purchase whatever, like, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. really, really good. Yeah, I mean, so, I'm, I'm a massive fan of, like, a, especially Grim Fandango. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Played a bit of that. Um, and obviously, the, the creator of, uh, so I worked on Doris and Dragon, episode right. one and two. Okay. Um, and um, the, the, the major creator, Ben Simpson, he's very heavily influenced by Mike Island. Broken Sword, uh, okay. Grim Fandango, and it was like a, it's because obviously, uh, Point to Click Adventures was something that was incredibly big in the 90s, yeah, and it huge. seems, and, and yeah. it's got such a loyal and um, hardcore fan base, and um, sort of like you can see there's, there's been a, a trend in developing more, as because everyone's just realised, well, people actually enjoy these kind of games, and yeah, I think it's exactly. a shame it's been ignored for so long, to be honest with you, but it's nice to see a bit of a resurgence with that, uh, and sort of a... Uh, new, new, new renaissance for point to click adventures. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And tell me about um, obviously your lecturing. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, when so, did this, how did this all happen? So, um, so in November, uh, yeah. I started at University of West London. Okay. Um, I teach uh, mostly video games audio, like uh, yeah. dynamic audio, because uh, in my role in the company is um, I, I basically head the audio department. Um, it's it's been really rewarding because students will ask you questions about things that. You, you wouldn't think you'd be like, why do you want to know how to do that? But they're like, uh, okay. it's something that you can, makes you think outside the box, and you learn as much teaching as you do uh, sort of studying it. And I, I've learned so much, and I find it very rewarding. Um, and it helps get off the imposter syndrome you have, like especially in the industry. Right. Like, should you be here talking about this? But when you when you teach, it's kind of it's almost humbling at the same time as like it's okay to say I don't know. Yeah. And this is where you need to go to learn this. And it's also okay to say, I do know. And it really is helpful to put perspective on, especially in the video, if a video games career, it's really useful. I would highly recommend to anyone to, to go and teach, especially at a university level. I've heard horror stories about college level, but <laughs> you know. I mean, if, if it helps, um, when I finished university, um, they actually asked me back to be a lecturer. Yeah. And I was like, mm. why do you want me to be a lecturer? You mm. didn't teach me how to do this. How the hell can I teach this? Yeah. And they were like, you can do it. So I just, I just did it. <laughs> just <laughs> ran with it. And uh, yeah, it seemed to work well. So yeah. I never knew that. You were a lecturer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, wow. I taught people how to run wow. a successful business, despite the fact that my business was not successful. <laughs> <laughs> what but was no, that? Uh, so a place called Ravensbourne. I always wanted okay. to work in TV and film. Yeah. And everyone said, go here. So mm. I did. And it wasn't quite as good as people said it would be. Mm. Um, but yeah, I sort of, I learned how to do stuff. And I ran a business there at the same time. And they said, yeah, you're doing this well, so what? teach others how to do that. So I did. That's and that was a laugh. Enough. Anyway, sure. I'll stop stealing folks now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's really yeah. interesting. <laughs> Is <Yeah>. it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, what do you want to do going forward? What, what's the plan? Um, I'd like to get more involved in um, education. Okay. Um, I would like to work uh, on more... Uh, diverse range of uh, products. So for example, uh, I'm really interested in architectural visual visualization. Okay. And uh, that's kind of using games engine to basically create art architectural renderings. I'm really interested in that, especially from like an audio perspective, because um, in on a consumer level, you're designing something in a games engine for mobile devices, low power devices, and how can we integrate interesting audio into that? That's something I'm really interested in. 
um, it, it would be nice because with um, Eric Pacer we're working on uh, uh, some other things as well in the pipeline. Um, you know, I, I'm just really grateful to be on like the ground level with um, a company where um, you don't feel like a cog in the machine and you feel like you are a part of of uh, the creative decision making process it's, it's really rewarding and um in the future i, I would just want to see um just work on more games i guess cool yeah how many in the, is it big company or so i think we're directorship of four mm-hmm. people okay. and i think we've got about two employees so uh we've been going for seven years mm. uh, since 2015 um and you know, uh, it's been great. We're still around, so like that's yeah, a good, yeah, that's, exactly. a good that's a good exactly. sign. Not bad going. Seven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, seven years. Yeah, good stuff. Nice yeah. Point. And thoughts on the show so far? Because obviously, this is the new Red, isn't it? Yeah. Like, same same team behind, same organisers. Yeah. It. I mean, it's really so, good. It, it feels very um, consumer friendly. Yeah. Which can be it, it can be very intimidating uh, for certain. Um, uh, sort of game conferencey kind of type of things is very industry focused yeah. and it can be very alienating especially like uh, so with students I've come with today yeah. they feel welcomed but if you're going into like a very industry focused one they can find it a bit intimidating oh, okay. um, which is good and um, obviously we're here on the Thursday I imagine on Saturday there'll be a lot more families and stuff yeah. so um, and it's, it's great just to see the turnout we've got Sega here Team 17 Devolver um, Curve some really big companies and it's like it's really nice um, to see and we're sitting at the moment in the um, tabletop area which is uh, I think tabletops don't get enough credit really the credit enough love. <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's lovely just to see have their own dedicated area where people can come and enjoy some board games it's good it's nice because I having been to like EGX worked at EGX a few times um, I've been to raised a couple of times before and I love the fact that obviously EGX is like the Hollywood, I suppose, isn't it? Of, yeah. of it's the big blockbuster games. You've got your franchise, you've got Call of Duties, Battlefield, etc., whatever. But it's nice to come to this the smaller scale, independent gaming stuff. It just it feels more intimate. Definitely, like feels a bit more friendly. Oh, maybe that's a bit unfair to say it's a bit more friendly, but just it yeah. feels like I'm going to make more real connections here. Yeah. It? Just it's smaller. It's definitely so, an indie space. It's an indie space. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And, or, yeah. well, it was res, but it was very yeah. much focused on the indie side of things. Yeah. And that was great because, you know, you wouldn't get big games here, but you get smaller games mm. here. And you'd have the devs that would talk about their and pa- the like the passion yeah, exactly. projects, you know, because that's exactly. what they were. You know. I mean, like, uh, some great indie games here uh, yeah. today. Uh, there's co- uh, people from companies that's from Holland, uh, Norway, and yeah. they've come all the way to uh, partake in what has, which shows you how important this is to our, our, our industry, really, is that these kind of events, I mean, uh, networking begins here, great ideas begin here. It's 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 an opportunity to truly see what goes on behind the scenes. I think it's a really great thing from for all facets. It's, it's, it's really, really, really great. And, and have you had any favorite games or anything that, you, um, that you've come across today so far? Uh, so I think there was a game called Spellbound uh, yeah. from a developer called Sally. Uh, really interesting art style. It's like a, a, vis- a graph- uh, like an interactive novel. Um, oh, okay. Very, very. Uh, it's nice to see some stuff which go against the grain. Like, in you, you'd see stuff which are like you know another first person shooter and stuff like that. It's just nice to see people trying stuff where um, you know it's it's very 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 specific and niche kind of uh, uh, market. It's really nice. I, I really like that um, game. There's. Uh, there's Bo- Boolean, I believe they're called. What's Boolean? Bo- Boolean. Yeah. Um, it's like a it. it's like a party game, oh, okay. a pirate themed uh, pirate uh, game. I've seen them at oh, um, Game Dev. Check, game, check yeah, yeah, I've seen them at uh, yeah. Game Dev London, uh, okay. which is uh, was King's Cross, I think, uh, earlier this uh, later last year. Um, yeah, there's some familiar faces here. There's some great games. Um, always some great games. Whenever you go to a games convention, they always share the cream, sure. the crop. But um, yeah, really enjoying myself. Cool. Playing some games. And what's the plan for later? Are you got any? Are you going to any after parties? Or anything? Oh, I'd love to, but it's my wife's birthday today, so I have to go take her for dinner. <laughs> ah, hundred percent. James wants an invite there, don't you? I'm not, I'm, <laughs> mean, I'm just. <laughs> but there, there was something floated earlier when I was speaking to someone, my there's, friend. There's quite a few um, yeah. after parties, I believe. I mean, uh, sure. I mean, whenever it comes to these game kind of conferencing things, there's always like multitude of different after parties and stuff. Like, um, because the question is if you're allowed in or not. That's uh, I always get rejected and try to sneak in and stuff. How do you not get in? You make freaking games. I mean, you it, are some, a game some, developer. Because it's, it depends. It depends ah, on okay. the type of pass you get. 
Uh, uh, right, so, right. for example, my colleague was here giving a talk, so she has a different type of pass to me because I'm here with the university today. Uh, so you you uh, have okay. uh, you have different um, facets of uh, pass, and um, it's it's kind of clicky, but you get some um, events where they don't really do that, and like. Yeah. Uh, I imagine there's going to be a group of people here going to just form their own after party. They're like, to hell with it. We're going to make our, our own one. And that happens quite a lot as well. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, that's kind of it. That's, that's Great. Kind of it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah. Quite, Thanks quite so much too. for coming on. Yeah, appreciate no it thank, you so, thank you so much. I really oh, appreciate it. I should ask you a bit more, actually, before we sure. do that again. Um, the Game of Disco. Tell us about when you, because you came along with the Game of Disco. Or yeah. your, can you tell us more about your relationship with Game of Disco and kind of so, play? I think I started coming to Game of Disco about, must have been 2016, Okay. really, uh, and I was in a band at the time, uh, and uh, we were playing sort of chip tune music, and uh, cool. uh, I, I, yeah. I knew Swanee and stuff, and he yeah. invited us down, let's come down, we play video games, we have some great music, we have a fun time, and we were going to, I think it was the book club in Shoreditch. Yeah, 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 the book club on the uh, regular menu. Yeah, 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 and like, Absolutely you just have a whale of a time like it was great and it was really sad because when the pandemic hit and also it changed with what the pandemic did also it changed people's behavior Mm. i don't think they want to go out so much anymore and it's it's really sad because we had amazing events like game disco i I love to go to it's nice to see some fresh music that you know you, you wouldn't discover any other way um and you know have some good laugh with some friends get the chance to play some really interesting Games. I think uh, you yeah. had that game. Was it ty- Typing for the Dead? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was yeah. A lot. Uh, that was really fun. And like these are games, like I mean, you would either have to own it, or yeah. you'd have to go really out of your way to find it. And you won't have other opportunities to play these kind of games. And they're Good really, point. really yeah. fun. And um, it, what, what you guys do with Game of Disco, I think, is really, really great. And it really, it actually helped me a lot with um, like. Uh, early on in my networking because meeting people so uh, I, I've got so many friends that I've had like which I've met at Game of Disco and oh, I continue cool. to talk to them and um, you know I, I see people here like uh, there was Len and um, obviously Swanee these people yeah. are, are, are people I met at Game of Disco and you know yeah. it's, I it, met Len at Game of Disco too yeah yeah and yeah. You, yeah. you truly do make good friends over uh, shared experiences and um, passions. Yeah, you know, it, it's sad you're not the first person to say that to me. Yeah. Game of Disco really did bring a crowd together and made permanent friends for life, and they've stayed friends. Mm. And, you know, they've kept in touch during the pandemic years, and I think it's given people a lot of hope. And, um, yeah, hopefully we will be back, you know, Ex- yeah. one one day. <laughs> as soon as we can. I mean, I met, that's how I met Harry and yeah. Swanee. Yeah. Was, I just randomly came along to a Game of Disco night because it looked fun. And I was like, yeah, this looks awesome. Came along on my own, didn't know anyone, and just started coming. It's, it's really welcoming then, as well. The crowd's yeah, really welcoming. Like, and, and, yeah. and then now doing this. Because it can so. be really intimidating walking <laughs> yeah. into a room and you don't know yeah. anyone, but everyone knows how to play video games. Mm. Everyone is enjoying the music, so it, it mm. becomes this great thing. And I, I like how you tie it in to uh, different things like uh, there's not much space for things like chiptune artists, for example. Yeah. And you guys did some opening parties for some uh, video games as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, launch day yeah. parties. And I think that's really amazing because you're you're offering a platform for people who may not necessarily be able to see that platform anywhere else. It's, it's, it's a really um, important space, I think, in the London uh, video games um, scene, to be honest, especially the music scene. Yeah, well, definitely. I can't, I can't wait until we can do the next live. Event. It's open. It's open yeah. soon. Yeah, very soon. Yeah. I'd cool. love to be down. Yeah, one hundred percent. You'll be on the invite. Happy yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, look forward to it. Great. All right. Well, that wraps it up. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Thank you for yeah stopping by. Yeah. Thanks. What an interview. That was good. That was guy. really good. Really yeah. enjoyed that. He knew his um, stuff. It's it's nice to have someone that's passionate about what they did. Yeah. No, yeah. It was I mean, really cool. You might have heard there when I lectured at university. I wasn't. I didn't enjoy that much because I was just so uh, disillusioned with um, Miney. But this guy. You know, obviously it meant the world, the world, this guy, it meant the world to him and it shows and his passion is there and he's passing that passion on to younger people. And that is great. That's what you want. Um, I'm feeling a bit left out because of the three of us, I'm the only one who hasn't been a lecturer at university. Now. So I mean, maybe can I go back to maybe Raven's, <laughs> where were you? Ravensbourne. Ravensbourne, it's which sounds one. a little bit like one of the houses in Harry Potter. <laughs> God, that's <I'm> serious. <laughs> That series is the bane of my life. Whenever everyone asks me my name, it's like, I'm Harry. Oh, Harry Potter. No, and you went to Ravensbourne no, as well. I stole, 
He stole my name. I was Harry first, not that Arthur. Um, I'm not but, a fan of that series. But um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, maybe yeah. you know, I should be. I should do some lecturing. Maybe, I can yeah. believe that. Yeah. What could you talk with passion about? Um, many things, Harry. I mean, not with knowledge, but with passion, definitely. I could talk about drinks, food, gaming. Well, how's that um, for a tease right but, there? Well, there you go. exciting but, stuff coming. No knowledge, but with plenty of passion. No. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks so yeah. much, you guys, for listening to yeah, part one. This will be part one of part two, because it's a special two-part episode. You know, with, there's so much to talk about and so many interviews to go through. Yeah, we've got quite a few people, um, really yeah, good people. So, in that, so yeah. It, it's our one-year anniversary. How cool yeah. is that? Yeah. Excellent. We're doing it face to face. We never do this. Exactly. It's exciting. Very exciting. Yeah, and I guess oh. all that's left to say is what have you been playing this month? Yeah. Besides so, what you played just now. So yeah, excluding obviously what I just played. Yeah. Um I haven't been I've been quite busy with work, so I haven't really played very much. Bad uh, what was the last thing? So I've completed Well, I think I spoke about my last episode. I've completed Red Dead Two now. Did I say that? I can't remember if we mentioned that. Uh, you said that, no. So I've completed Red Dead 2, but that was a couple of months ago. Uh, yeah, great, except it, well, I'm, without going to spoilers, but just at the end, it gets a little slow. So you spend the whole game as a cowboy gunslinger, yep. and then towards the end, suddenly you're, you're like setting up home and your ranch with your, part, you know, with your partner, and then you're just doing things like going into town and you know, taking some photos, and it all just becomes a bit slow. So it just changes tack completely. It was like, oh, I want to go out and gunslinging. But yeah, it was it, overall very entertaining. And there is the climatic end scene that you'd expect with the final battle with the bad guys. So yeah, it's good. I've not played it, but yeah, I really as I understand it, it yeah. the first Red Dead game ended quite definitively. And so the second yeah, one is your, like... A... Your character is the... Uh, you play a different character. You're not the character in, yeah. the, in the first one. So you're, you're a different member of the gang. But you see your, interestingly, you see your, you see the John Morgan, you see the character from the first Red Dead. He's, he's there as an NPC. So, yeah. Okay, I, I don't want to, I want to discuss this, but I don't want to yeah. spoil anything. Okay. So, spoiler alert, <laughs> didn't he die in the first game? Who, John Morgan? Yes. Yes, yeah, he does. But he, but this game is a prequel. This is set Thank before. You. There you yeah, go, there sorry, you go. sorry, I should have said that. It's a prequel to the first one. <laughs> that yes. might have been, might have been it's key. Set, yeah. It's set before. That's fairly key. Fair play. It's set before. It's all good. So it's the early days uh, when they're all. So in the first game for Red Dead fans, sorry, this is a bit boring if you haven't played it, but um, John obviously John Morgan is alludes to he was in a gang, um, and in this sequel you get you're actually another member of the gang in the gang. So you, as I said, John Morgan's an NPC is one of your gang, basically one of your gang. So. Cool. That's it. Good to yeah. know. Um, and so completed that. Still playing Yakuza. I haven't picked up the courage, but I'm right at the end of y- Yakuza Kiwami. Nice. So I want to finish that. I'm not sure I can pick up another. I know there's another more Yakuza games that come out, but I just, I'm not sure I'm just ready for that now. And then I still need to finish Fallout. Uh, <laughs> I was on the verge of getting a PS5. So on the PS5 month, I, as I was telling you earlier, Harry. Yeah, you were. Um, I, so today, PlayStation um, Store sent I, i'm signed up to a telegram group and they sent out a message saying that they are now available and you can you can buy one through the PlayStation store so i went on the page and then of course inevitably they'd all gone out of stock um on monday hamley's had the launch of their game store hamley's uh, hamley's Ooh, yeah which i very I've, fancy very fancy i've never set, set foot in hamley's since i was a child That's but fair. the hamley's in in regent street they had their gaming zone launch on monday and i had it on good information basically the guy in Hamleys who I saw the other week he said that they probably will have PlayStation 5s um, he can't say definitely because it hasn't been confirmed but he would think that they should do and they weren't announcing it there was going to be no PR no publicity or anything. and so on the off chance I went along to go and get one um, and then I was in the queue and basically there wasn't there weren't many people there because no one really knew it was happening and there were three left and then they said oh it's cash only and I was like, what? I've got my card. Can I reserve one? Well, no, you can't. Oh, you have to go and get cash. And then you can't. we can't reserve one for you. You have to get cash and come back. So I was like, this is ridiculous. I was quite, obviously quite annoyed. I imagine I, so. I ran out, <laughs> legged it down the street, yeah. got to a cash machine where clearly someone else was also taking out cash for the same reason. 
desperately had to get cash out on two cards because seriously, who takes out like 455 liquid on card? Really? You can't take out that much on my card on that account. I'm limited to like 300 or something. So I used two different cards, took the cash out, raced back to the store, and of course, they'd sold the last one already. So Hamley is yeah. poor form. Poor form, Hamley is pretty disappointing. Surely, surely they so, love money. It's Hamley. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know what the cash thing was about. I, their till, they said the till system went down, apparently. It just seemed, like, really odd. Um, it was quite seriously unimpressed. I thought, very disappointed, Hamleys, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> they are yeah. one of our regulars. You know. <laughs> yeah, they are one of our regulars. <laughs> cool. So, Harry, what have you been playing? So, I've been playing a binge of the old-school Sonic games. Ooh, It's one nice. of my favourite games okay. is Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which I was playing, obviously, because why Sonic, Sonic 2 just came out. Why versus the 1 and 2? What's the diff- what? Sonic 3, why is it so much Sonic better? 1, obviously, is just Sonic, you know, yeah. the first one, just yeah. him. Sonic 2 introduces Tails, and yeah. that's, that's cool. And without, again, spoiling stuff, um, the film leans very heavily into Sonic 2 law let's say and okay. it's really good as a result okay. um, but yeah Sonic 3 Knuckles was the pinnacle of the series it was just fantastic in my opinion it was okay. so brilliant but you can't find it anywhere because and this is not confirmed hmm. this is a rumour apparently Michael Jackson did a lot of work on those games no on the way. music and as such the rights are a nightmare and that's why those games are never on compilations oh, offered wow. by Sega yeah Oh, shit. Which is a shame because they were such good games. Yeah. Such as fun. Like, finishing those games as a kid was like the best sense of accomplishment I have ever had. But yeah, playing those again and brought all the memories back. What a laugh. What were you playing on? Emulator. Or yeah, you? Emulator. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get anywhere else. It's a mess. Well, except the original. Except playing on the console. Right? Yeah. You know what? I do have it on my original have you? Finger, I do. Oh, okay. But I got it on eBay, but it's like. It's slower than I remember. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. Plus, like, trying to plug an old-school console into a TV these days oh, is... Yeah. If it's not a CRT, it can't be done. Yeah. It's a mess. Yeah. I don't have... I need to get a CRT. I don't have one. They're I'm getting so it. expensive now, because retro gamers are buying them all. Yeah, because who else is buying them, let's face it? No, that's about <laughs> All right, cool. cool. Should we that rounds it up there for there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is um, part one. Listen up very soon for part two. Um, yeah, hopefully more interviews and more chats. And, uh, yeah. All right. Nice. Thanks, guys. Uh, Till next time. Thanks for listening. Thanks and, for listening. Um, yeah.